Hello everyone, my name's Hannah Collison from Inspired Creations and today I'm going to show you how to make a large open rose. Here's a picture of the project. And if you'd like to join along, join in, then uh, here's the kit list as well. I'll just pull that up, put it on the screen for a moment or two. So if you'd like to work alongside, then you do need to prepare a cone in advance, which is actually the first part of the lesson. So here we go. To start with, you need to make the cone center for the rose. That looks like this. And I have here a piece of sugar flour paste, which is two centimeters in diameter. And I'm just going to warm that up because we need to make sure it's crack free and in a ball shape before we start to form the cone. So just give it a good mix through. And um, just check you've got about the right quantity, which is two centimeters in diameter roughly. And once you've formed it into a smooth ball, press one end between the finger and thumb and that will create a pointed end and keep the other end nice and fat. The idea is to create a cone that fits within the smallest cutter that you're using. So roughly two and a half centimeters in length and one and a half centimeter in diameter. Once you've formed your cone shape, put a little bit of sugar glue onto the end of your kebab stick. I'm using the pointed end, but you could as easily put it into the unpointed end. Push that through. You might want to just get some of that glue um, a bit more into the hole you've made. And I've pushed it into about here, three quarters of the way through. Just make sure it's closed up and then just clean off the excess glue. And double check that you've got a cone that is going to fit within the width of halfway up the cutter. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit short, we just don't want a tiny one or anything too big. This cone needs to dry for 12 hours before you use it. If you have a linen cupboard with a hot water tank, you could put it in there to speed dry it or turn your oven on very, very low setting and put it in there for about 10 or 15 minutes. And that should help take out some of the water content and uh, in, in speed up the drying process. Next, color your paste. I'm using the paste color from Sugar Flare Fuchsia Pink. And I've just used a cocktail stick to apply some colour into the paste and then give it a good warm up. Once you've mixed all the colour in, then when you're not using the paste, pop it into a bag so it doesn't dry out. The sugar flour paste that I'm using here is Squire's Kitchen, as it, we need a paste that will set firmly and quickly for making the rows. Take a portion of the paste that you've coloured and roll it out nice and thinly. This will be for the first five shapes. And these shapes, you can actually make them or use the paste as darker shade. And when you come to roll out the larger petals, you can add a little bit of white to the paste and that will give it an interesting variation. Rolling the paste really thin. You have to be quite fussy with this. Uh, you should be able to start to see the board come through. It needs to be phyllo pastry or the pancakes that come with your crispy aromatic duck. That's the thickness. I would say phyllo pastry is probably thinner and that would I would use that as your guide. So your paste goes quite far rolling it doesn't matter if the paste sticks to the surface of the board once you're happy go ahead and turn the paste over so you can see you can almost see my fingers through that 
very thin. Turn the paste over so the dry side is on the surface. A little bit of corn flour will help stop that sticking. And cut five of the smallest shape. So just place the shape on the paste. Give it a good rub. You might, if you've got a surface, I use this whiteboard for rolling paste out and I don't really want to scratch it. So I'm going to introduce my um, flour rolling out board uh, just to avoid damaging my big board. When these come out, pop them under plastic. I've got this special plastic wallet from Wilton which will allow you to keep them under there for about 20 minutes. If you haven't got that, then you can use something like an A4 plastic wallet. So I'm going to continue to cut out five of these petals. When you're cutting the shape, make sure that you press firmly onto the cutter and continue to rub the cutter onto the surface of the board until you can hear it cut through. Pull the excess paste from around and then if the shape is still in the cutter, use your finger without cutting yourself to carefully rub around. That should release it and give you a fur free cut. You can achieve a good uh, large open rows using just the three cutters and using just five of each shape. So I've already cut five of the small ones, so I'm now going to cut five of the medium size so that I have a paler shade of pink for those five petals. I'm going to incorporate some fresh white paste and then cut my five petals out. And once I've done cut those out, I can go ahead and cut five of the largest petal shape and that I can add a bit of white to again to change the tone. Having rolled out my five middle sized petals, I'm now going to roll and cut five large cutters. This time I've added a bit more white to make it even paler. So now I've got my 15 petals, five small, five medium, five large. And these are under plastic and they'll last under there for about 20 minutes. Again, you can use an A4 plastic wallet if that's something that you've got rather than this. This actually comes with two layers, so you can uh, overlap your flowers quite comfortably, um, but it doesn't keep them dry for very long. The next job is to vein each petal, and we're gonna start by veining the largest petals first and work back. So we're gonna do the largest five, then the largest medium size five and then we're going to go to the smallest ones and the reason for that is because the two the medium and the large petals are going to be set on spoons and need to dry for a little while before we can attach them whereas the smallest five petals can go onto the rose cone straight away the veiner i'm using you've got two options this one is the squire's kitchen tea rose and this one is actually a medium sized poppy veiner and both will give you a texture that is suitable for the rose petal. If you're using the poppy veiner though you'll be putting it into one of the sides rather than through the middle so that you pick up some of the texture that's on the veiner. So that the paste doesn't stick just put some corn flour into both sides of the veiner Pick out one of your shapes. Lay that into the dipped part. Avoiding this part here because that can sometimes cut through the petal. Close up your petal and then press nice and firm with your hand because there's no wire in this paste it's okay to wriggle and apply quite a bit of pressure to get a good texture. Open up the veiner to reveal the petal with the markings. Once you've 
veined one of the petals, you need to work on it straight away to thin the edge. So bring your foam pad in and use a ball tool or bone modeling tool. So this is the bone ball tool, which is quite good because it's got a nice surface area to work on. The bone modeling tool has got six, sorry, two sides to it, but um, not as big. So you might find that it pinches and possibly tears. Uh, it's a preference thing more than anything. So when I have petals this size, I prefer to work with the ball tool. So start up the top and just run the tool round to about two thirds of the way down. We don't need to go back over that section. We're just gonna go back up to the top and halfway on the foam pad and halfway on the paste, I'm gonna run the tool. So you'll notice that this part here, the halfway part on the tool is sat on the very, very edge. You're not completely on the paste. You're not off the paste, you're pinching the paste. Once you've created the thinning around the edge, you can go ahead and use a cocktail stick to curl over the edges. This is the top of the petal here. If you position the cocktail stick so it's at a diagonal, finishing at the top and in the middle here, but behind the petal. Take hold of the very edge of the petal and start to wrap around the petal until it's curled up and you end up stopping when you get to the middle of the top edge. Turning that over, you can see that it's rolled over itself. Then you can pull the cocktail stick out and position it on the other side. Press. Just as you need to apply a little bit of pressure to um, stop it from unraveling and curl. So now we, have, now we have a petal, a large petal, that looks a little bit like this, coming towards a point at the end. This is the inside or front of the petal. This is the back side of the petal. So you can see how it's curled up. This then needs to go onto a spoon to dry. So these are just dessert spoons. We need to make sure they're clean. Put some corn flour in to stop it from sticking and then position the petal so that the curled bits overlap the top edge of the spoon like so. Go back to the front of the petal. Use your fingers to press or your thumbs to press in so that you create the curve of the spoon and then just neaten up that tip end to make it look more realistic. Just try and avoid pressing too firm around this edge because you don't want to get an edge of spoon marking as well. And that will set on the spoon for about 20 minutes and we'll go ahead and do the same to all the large ones and all the medium petals. If you find you're quite a quick worker, then you can actually vein all the large petals at the same time. Go ahead and frill them quickly, immediately after, if you don't want the paste to dry, and shape them onto spoons. So it can become quite a quick process. Uh, but if you're learning, when you're learning, it's, everything's a bit slower. So you might want to just make one petal at a time just so that the others don't dry out. That's frustrating if they do because then you're having to re-roll your paste and that will take you even more time. Okay, so we're just thinning, all, thinning the edges of all these petals and then we can go ahead, shape each one. So I'm just going to show that again. So we've got the cocktail stick behind the shape at an angle coming off in the center of the top and middle and then or side and then wrap around and you're actually properly pinching the edge so quite a bit of pressure to get the edge to start to curl under completely under pull the cocktail stick out and you can see that from the back it's rolled right backwards and once you've done that you can go ahead and slide it through the spoon and press into the spoon to take on the cupped shape. When you're creating these, just be careful that you don't have any ruffle here 
if you do, if it's lifted in any way, when you come to attach these roses, it's going to be the, these rose petals, it's going to be almost impossible to get them to hold. So here and here needs to be flat, ready for glue. So I'll just do a couple more so that you can see the process. Corn flour on the spoon just to make sure that it's not sticking. Making sure this part's nice and flat. Again, if you can't work quickly, then just work on one petal at a time. You want them to dry, but not before you've had a chance to properly shape them. So you can see here that I have all my five large and five medium petals all prepared in the way I've just shown you. These would then be set to dry for about 15, 20 minutes, depending on how damp it is outside. What you want is a petal that is still pliable, but will hold its shape. Now we can work on the smallest petals as they're going to be attached directly to the cone whilst they're still wet. I'm going to vein in the same way as before. Good old press down, release the petal. Introduce the foam pad and thin the edges. This time you may decide to go down to the large end of the bone modelling tool. Just to give it a nice shaping. This first petal is going to be wrapped right around the cone. So I need a enough glue to be able to do that. So I'm going to paint across the top, leaving about half a centimetre here unglued. Bring that glue all the way down the sides and through the centre. Just try and avoid getting your foam pad wet because if you need to shape on there later, you don't want to have your next petals sticking. Position the cone in the middle of the teardrop shape allowing a little bit of room at the top. Wrap around one side, it can be the left side or the right side, so that it closes right round. And then this one following the angle of the cone, we're going to wrap and overlap the other side. So now we have a closed up bud, but we also have a flap of excess paste here, which we can get rid of using our scissors. So I'm just going to take my small straight edge nail scissors, bring this flat together so to a fold, and we can cut at the base near the cone. That way it will neaten it up and also help the petal round itself. Press in any creases that you can see that might be getting in the way of the next petal. You need to make sure that you can't see the cone through the top. It needs to be a, a circle, a small hole where you can't see down in. Vein and thin the next small petal in the same way. Be careful if you're going backwards and forwards because sometimes that can make it crease. Take some more glue, paint the glue so that you've got just a centimetre showing at the top now, but definitely paint down the sides and in the centre. If there's not enough glue, you'll find it won't stick. This petal is going to go onto where this petal joins. So in effect, directly opposite. So lay the shape, sorry, lay the cone on the shape. The height of this new petal needs to be the same as the one that's already on there. 
press on on one side. So that will probably be the side that you attach the other one. Normally what happens is that you go, once you've pressed on say the left side, every petal that you add will be on the left side. And then once you've done that, keep the flap here open and we're ready to prepare the last three shapes. Add some glue, the same amount as before. So definitely down the sides, across the top. You can leave a little bit more gap at the top, but not a huge amount because you still need at least two thirds of this petal glued. I'm just using standard sugar glue, which is quite watery when you make sugar flowers. The first of these three petals is going to slot in. So just pick up the shape, glue facing down in towards the cone. Line up the petal height, the same as the center height. And it's in there overlapping slightly. Now you can gently close that second petal a little bit, leaving the third petal open for petal number four. Slot petal number four in, close up petal number three slightly. And then if you wish, you can actually stop here or you can add that fourth petal. If I was making a bud, I'd probably stop at this point and shape the rose. If I open up, so this one was the petal number two, I'm just gonna close that a little bit so that when we put the final fourth petal on, that can slip into here, keeping the height. If the outer petals start to come down below the height of the center, it can look a little bit like a cabbage. Pressing the bottom where the fat end of your cone is. And then this excess we are going to need to cut off. So as before, find the base of the point of the um, petal where it's at the base of the cone and then um, just snip through the excess. Now, if you make your cone larger, you will end up with a slightly bigger rose. And of course, then you won't need to um, trim. But I've made mine smaller, so I'm just showing you how to adjust. Okay. So now we have this but it's not quite looking shapely enough. So what I want to do is make sure the bottom's on and then with a cocktail stick, I'm just going to take the stick at an angle, take the edge of the petal while it's still dry and begin to help it open. So it's opening at a bit of an angle. Just make it look natural. So if you wanted to, you could actually create a bud and put a calyx on, but we're, we're gonna go for a, uh, the extra 10 petals on there to make it a full rose. So help me now, I need to set my rose bud into a piece of oasis. So I need to measure how deep or how long we want that kebab stick to be because at the moment I've got a bit that's extending beyond. So if I trim that to just about a centimeter from the bottom of the depth of the um, polystyrene dummy, just use a pair of wire cutters. Sometimes these pieces can shard off so if you know how long that kebab stick needs to be for each of your roses, you could pre-cut them. And then that way you haven't got to worry because the pre-cut, the snipped end, the end that you've snipped can actually go into the oasis. So it's looking a bit messy on the back here, but that would not show because you've got a calyx going on if it's a bud and because we've got extra petals going on. I've pre-drilled a hole using the kebab stick so that I can just simply slot this in. If there's any resistance, then just drill the hole a little bit more open. 
the idea is to store it. You could probably fit two roses on here, but you store it so that when you're ready, you, well, you can store it there until you're ready to put it on the cake. And that way they're a bit more safe. Okay, so that's still feeling like we've got a bit of resistance in the bottom there. So I'm just going to use a longer kebab stick to try and get down to the bottom. We do need to get down to the bottom. Okay, so that's a little bit lower now. So this now should pretty much drop without much resistance. <laughs> we'll just carry on. I think what I need to do is break through the bottom. Okay. Now we should be okay. To help you a little bit, you could use a pair of tweezers to get that down into your dummy. It does not want to go. The problem you've got is you don't want too much resistance, otherwise you're not going to get it out when you need to um, put it on the cake. Making a lot of mess with some polystyrene. There we go. Okay, so now it's almost all the way in. We've got about half a centimetre showing. We need to glue all the medium-sized petals. So they've had a chance to dry. They are holding their shape now, but they're still a little bit pliable. Paint a bit of glue down the side. So you don't want lots of excess and you don't want to paint in the middle. It's just a V from here down and back up again. You can take them off the spoon if that's easier, but I would reset them on the spoon until you're ready to stick them onto the flower. The nice thing about this is that you can um, leave these for about five, six, seven minutes, and that's going to give the glue an opportunity to start to soak into the sugar flower paste. And instead of being slippery, it should be just tacky and hold on. Okay, so having glued them, we're now ready to assemble. You may find if your petals are a bit on the large side, then what you can do is chop across here. So trim them using a pair of nail scissors, just like this. Just a little bit, enough to um, help this not look too high. So the idea is to start on one of the petal edges so that the petal edge that's already on the bud lines up with the center of the new petal. Pressing only at the bottom for the moment and then after a few seconds the side only so that you continue to keep this opening in the middle. If your rose feels like it needs to be further down in the dummy, then do that at this stage because um, you're going to have difficulty later. Just to be honest, I think that'll be all right because I've got my outer petals to go on as well. Okay, so straight away you can see how it's starting to take shape. It's a little bit higher up. I'm not too concerned because I know that means that I can actually open my flower. So you continue with your middle sized layer and the idea is to overlap all of these petals. If you remember, you pressed on on the left side and you slotted in on the right. Well, that's what I did. So whichever way you did that, you need to carry on. But if it's easier for you not to slot in, if it's easier for you to overlap then overlap on the opposite side. Just remember, if you need to, you can trim the petal. Just taking a little bit of the point off at the end. It gives you the flexibility to make larger and smaller roses. So pressing at the bottom, hold on. I'm holding on here for a few seconds just to help the glue take hold. 
and then I move gently to the side, so either side. Hold in place for a few moments. It's a patience game, this one. Taking the next shape, trim the end. You can trim before you glue. Position that so the end you've just trimmed is facing down towards the surface of the dummy. Overlap, just remember which side you're going to overlap if you're not tucking in and press on the sides. And also space them out so that five petals don't look too crammed on the sides. Clean off your hands if they get a bit gluey. I am a bit gluey. <laughs> Got a damp cloth here to help me with that. Just clean off my um, scissors. Go ahead, take that triangle off. Just make sure you've got enough glue still. Overlap. Holding on. Pressing the sides, so on the bottom, on the sides. Now, the last petal, we need to take a little bit off the end. This one now, this was the first one we put off, on on the middle layer. This is the last one, but we need to open up the very first one and slot this one in. So carefully drop it into place. And then close up. Just make sure, so I've got to make sure that's straight. Press at the bottom. This is the last one I have to touch in. Oh, sorry, my camera is gone because I've just hit my glasses. Oh, stop wobbling, that's it. And then bring this one into play. Okay. So now you've got your middle layer, you need to support it. Until the glue has set quite firmly, you'll find that it's, there's a real possibility that the petals will drop off. So to help you, you can roll up a piece of kitchen towel. And this is going to create like a little um, support. Flatten it nicely. Take your scissors and cut little sections. And those pieces can be folded again. And now you've got something a bit springy that's going to support. So all the while that this needs to just hold, you can just put those little springy supports into the back to hold the petals. Just fold each support in half. They do have a habit of flicking out and you do need to be careful because once you put your outer petals on, you will put these supports back in. But if your petal back is wet, then these will stick and not come out again. So you just need to be aware of that. If you find that they are flicking out all over the place, you can support using cocktail sticks. So what we would do is hold on to the support piece. And put a cocktail stick behind it. And that way it will just stop it from flicking out while it's taking hold. These support methods, it's a good idea once you've finished the rows to keep it like that until you're ready to put these roses onto a cake. That way, if you have a damp day, they won't fall apart. Okay, so that's your 
half rows. So these are the largest set of petals and again I've glued them in the same way and I'm taking a little bit off the end because I'm seeing that my cone was not big enough to accommodate the largest petals. And then we're ready to attach. So having left this to dry for a few minutes, I can remove the supports. You may decide to make additional supports just so that you've got more of them to go around once it's a full rose. I'm just going to remove everything for the moment, but you need to work quite swiftly, especially if you haven't left this part of the rose to dry for very long. Go back to the first largest petal that you glued. That should be the tackiest one because the glue is absorbed into the sugar flower paste. And we're going to line this up in between like brickwork. So making sure that the cut end is lowermost, that goes in right down to the bottom, to the underside of the rose. Pressing down on the bottom only, and then either side like we did before. The idea is to keep everything cupped. Then if you remember, I overlapped on this side, or you can interlap, but it's easier to overlap when they're the, this, the petals are this size. So we want to stagger again, but really effectively overlap so that we can spread all five of these new petals evenly around the rows. I'm just gonna support, hold in here for a moment. What's happening is my cone is quite wet. So it's moving up and down. Now, as we add in the petals, so once I've got this first one in, I need to overlap the second one and then I can put my support in. And if you remember, we lifted up the piece of kitchen towel, popped in our cocktail stick, which we can remove and put back in tighter when, when, we, when we want to. So pressing on the bottom and the sides as you go along. That's two petals in, now we're putting the third one in. Try and do it so that they're like brickwork. We don't want one petal behind the other. We need to have them offset. Again, if your cone centre is moving, you need to hold on to it. What I might do actually is just use the cocktail stick to support the first petal here and then we can use another cocktail stick to support the second petal and once we've overlapped the third petal on this side we can do the same there so position press the bottom and then the sides after a few moments support that petal with a cocktail stick Keeping the height of these petals. I'm gonna put that in there just so I'm a bit more hands-free now. So I've got to put two more in and they're gonna come in roughly here and here. So positioning the petal with the cut side down. When you trim these outer petals, you don't need to trim them that much. You may not even have to. You might find by now that it's actually going to fit comfortably. So I have myself a cocktail stick just to support that. And if everything looks too closed up at this stage, it's fine because once we're done, we can actually um, adjust and open up. I'm just going to reset. Let's just get this unblurred as we go. And then pop the next petal, the last petal. And if you remember, like before, we need to peel back the first petal on the outer layer and slot it inside. So it overlaps the last petal, but it interlaps the first petal on that layer. So pressing at the bottom and then again at the sides. 
just make sure that you have made contact with the bottom of the side before you leave it alone otherwise you might find that it hasn't made contact and you've got um, no chance of it sticking. So now it's a chance to make some adjustments. At the moment I feel like it's a little bit closed up here but here's starting to look really nice. So if the cocktail sticks are coping with holding, supporting the whole thing, then you don't need to take them away. And where you feel like it's um, a bit too closed up, you can remove the cocktail stick, open up the rows a little bit, and then replace a little bit further away. And the same on this. So if I just loosen that cocktail stick and put it a little bit further away from the rows, and then I can pull the petals open so they start to touch the cocktail stick. I just position everything. And if you feel like you want to raise any of the sections, then you can go ahead and just drop the little supports in. And they, if you fold them, they will ping open and ping, they'll ping up and bring the rows up, as you can see, in places. Now at this point, I wouldn't put any more onto here. What I would do is um, I'd make some spare petals and then when I come to assemble the rows onto the cake, I can have some spare petals that I can actually attach individually in place wherever I feel like I've got to get to, um, to fill in. I realise I possibly have got six petals on that outside layer, but it does look good. Okay, now you have your finished open rows. It's quite a large one. It's about eight centimetres in diameter, so it is quite large. That cone's a little bit loose in the centre, but once it's dry. So I'd leave it overnight to dry and then store it in a cake box, not a tin. It needs to be something that air can get to. Um, and when you're ready, you can assemble it on the cake. And once it goes on the cake, put some supports in randomly so that you know that if, it, if you do have a damp night, that it's not gonna collapse on you. So the last thing I want to show you is actually how to attach a calyx or create an attach a calyx. Now, often with these roses, which are being put into a cake, I don't put a calyx on the large open rows or the half rows. I only actually put it onto the bud. And the reason for that is because once I've attached the big rows and the half roses to the cake, I want to be able to put additional petals where I feel I need to, to make it look more natural and to stop the cocktail stick or kebab stick showing from behind. Whereas the buds will actually go in as a filler so they can have a calyx on them. Roll out your green coloured paste quite thinly. Cornflour the surface and turn the paste over. I've actually already turned this over. No, I haven't, let's turn it over. So that the sticky side is uppermost. That will give you a crisper cut. Take the Kalex cutter and press down firmly. Give it a rub against the surface of the board until you can hear that it's cut through. Hold on to the cutter as you pull the excess paste from around. And if it's stuck in the cutter still, take advantage of that and just run your finger across without cutting yourself um, to clean up those edges and that'll give you a nice crisp cut calyx. Put the excess of your green into a bag so it doesn't dry out. And then we're going to drop this shape, I'm just gonna turn it over, drop the shape onto the surface. Now. It's actually raining outside at the moment, which has made this very, very sticky. So I need to put a bit of cornflour on here so that my tool doesn't stick. And using the small or the largest end, depending on what you prefer, we're just gonna thin the edges slightly, just a fraction. Remember to roll your paste thin, otherwise you'll end up with a cupping effect, which doesn't look very attractive. Once you've thinned all the edges, you can go ahead and glue the sepals. So I'm just putting a bit of glue up the center, which is coming to about half a centimeter from the tip end. We want to attach this 
almost completely to the bud. Take the bud that you've prepared, position the end of the kebab stick into the centre and bring it towards one of the holes on your foam pad or you can transfer it to another piece of um, foam and create your own hole, perhaps a bit of kitchen sponge, something like that. And then just position the cone or the, the sorry, not the cone, the um, rosebud um, into the centre. Flip the foam pad without any hesitation. Hold on to and pull off the foam pad. And then you can go ahead and position your calyx. Now, depending on how long these sepals are, you can actually stretch them a little bit to make them come up the bud a fraction. They look quite nice when the bud is only just opened if they're quite long and attached and if they're extending beyond the rosebud itself, then um, it actually looks really pretty. Like a bit like this one's coming beyond the rose lip bud edge. Be careful that you don't tear the sepals as you do this. You might find you haven't got any elasticity in there, in which case just leave it. Try and keep the edges pointed. Just press down the bottom here. And you can see that's tidied up the back of my flower. I'm just going to put that on the side for a moment because I want to make a, a little um, ball for the rose hip. So I'll just place that down on the side. Take some of my paste, possibly a ball for this. Or if we want to make a big rose, some of these are, some of the rose hips are bigger on different varieties of flower of roses so just um you decide what you want to do but this is a, a small ball and it's about three quarters of a centimeter in diameter but you can decide make sure that it's nicely warmed up so you haven't got any cracks in it and then that needs to be fed up the kebab stick so position it in the center of the ball and as a ball push it up so I'm just drilling the hole because my paste, again, it's raining outside, so it's super sticky at the moment. Sugar flour paste and sugar paste are super absorbent when it comes to moisture in the atmosphere. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue at the base here, not too much because I don't want it to dribble. And we're just gonna put the, Kayla, uh, the <laughs> rose hip on there and then press so that it becomes a little cone shape. So keep it rounded and plump at the top, but just press so it becomes a bit cone shaped down on the stem. And that is your calyx. Quite nice sometimes if it's opening a little bit, but just bear in mind wherever it opens, it's gonna be fragile. It could break once it's dry. So that's your open rose. I look forward to seeing you again soon. If you have any questions or you'd like to um, join one of our other classes, then uh, take a look at our website. Uh, the details are on here. You take care now. Bye-bye.